this is about cell groups and and this is one important way of growth that is very helpful that's very helpful for ministry um, that uh, let me introduce this you know because many churches are run just by the pastor preaching and then the people uh, listening to the sermons and then they go home and very often uh, they might forget what they've learned and they don't know how to apply it to their life and uh, there is not much uh, personal attention to help them spiritually and what happened is then uh, it's hard for them to grow and also the lay people if they don't participate in any ministry uh, they are not part of the worship team or Sunday school then uh, very often they don't have anything to contribute to the church but in the cell group system it's like this that the pastor will build up a group of cell group leaders and this group of leaders is first built up when the pastor started a cell group himself that he will uh, lead the cell group in a cell group uh, later we'll talk about the content but one part of it is the uh, application of the sermon the messages of the sermon and then we'll discuss with the uh, group members and help them personally it's not just teaching it's uh, two-way communication so listening to the people and then uh, responding to them oh, uh, so uh, the pastor first start a cell group and he will apply uh, the messages of the sermon and then discuss with the group members and then help them to apply it and f and also find out how the spiritual life of the members are uh, by caring for them it's not by pressure but by caring for them and helping them when when the pastor knows that they have certain problem they will help them they will uh, uh, listen to the needs and the the uh, problems and help them and also help them in front of the group and then also pray for people who are in needs so in a cell group now first there is worship uh, there is actually actually is icebreak that uh, time to build up relationship and then there is worship and then there is application of the message uh, then you know the pastor will build up the relationship with the people and care about them and then teach them how to care for each other so there should be training on these future leaders so some of the group members will be future leaders that will lead cell groups in a church now what are the advantages of the cell groups the cell group the main advantage is that the members would have someone to care for them uh, when they come to the church it's not just coming to the church and listening to the message and go home but they have some people to care about them and listen to them and responding to their needs and helping them with their spiritual life so they can apply the messages now in many churches many members they don't know how to apply the messages and also when they have problem in the spiritual life they don't know who to go for they cannot all go to the pastor the pastor will be too busy so if there are cell group leaders the cell group leaders would take care of the members and then uh, there will be other uh, you know uh, they, they call uh, you know it could be uh, pastors uh, it could be laid pastors above these cell group leaders to take care of them and then above all would be the pastor to take care of every uh, every leader so in this way the pastor will take care of the leaders and then the leaders will take care of other cell group leaders and then the cell group leaders will take care of the members but at the beginning of a church of course then you only have the cell group leaders to take care of the cell group members and then the pastor will take care of the cell group members and very often it was first the pastor will start with one cell group that he will demonstrate so he has to first learn the way of the cell groups how to you know discuss the Bible passages and talk with them 
and uh, apply it and ask them questions. There will be discussion, dis discussion questions on the messages and how to apply it. And then the pastor will raise up situation. For instance, uh, we, uh, the message is about forgiveness. So there could be questions like, uh, are there some people it's hard for you to forgive? And why is it important to forgive? And how can we forgive people whom uh, it's very hard to forgive? That some people have, who have hurt us deeply, how can we forgive? So the members would talk about their difficulties or share about how they have forgiven some people. And then uh, with the cell group, then the pastor will know, the leader will know which one of these members can apply the message and which one of them cannot. And then the pastor can continue to help the person uh, to help him grow. And uh, so the advantage of the cell group is that it's to be able to help the members to apply biblical truth to their lives. And then they also get support in the spiritual life. And they, got, they also get appreciation from the cell group. Now it's very important the cell groups has a uh, a positive attitude, an attitude of not to criticize, but an attitude of appreciation. You have grown, you have applied the Word of God, uh, you are growing, it's wonderful, and, and everyone will applaud and thank God for that, and then other people can learn from that. So that builds up a positive atmosphere. And in this kind of shepherding of the members, the members, you know, that then the, the leader can know the growth of the members, whether they are growing, whether they are following God's word, and what are the problems, and also to find out who are the potential leaders of the church in the future. Who, which of these are potential leaders that they can be used by God greatly to bless other people, that some of them even to be raised up to be uh, ministers in the future. So the cell group ministry has great advantages compared to the regular just preaching the sermon and the members just listen because uh, very often the members don't know how to apply the truth and then they will have a problem applying the truth and they, when they have spiritual problem, they, they don't know where to get help. So in a cell group, there can be weekly help and also prayer for each other. And also there can be laying on of hands by the leaders on the members to bless them, uh, to help them to experience the Holy Spirit and help them to build up a close relationship with God and help them to find ways to grow in the Lord. So there are many churches in the world that are very large, that uh, grew up, to be so large from cell groups that because if you just have a preaching a church, a church that only have preaching, then the growth cannot be very large. And also even when the church is large, uh, the people are not necessarily growing individually. They, they just attend the church. They like the church. Maybe they like the meetings. They like the healing. They like the help. But they don't grow spiritually. The cell groups help the members to grow spiritually and to be able to apply the truth and also uh, to serve God. So the cell group it is a place that the members can pray for each other, care for each other, that they can help other people and serve God right in the cell group. So a cell group church is a church that is made up of many cell groups and also have the worship service and have many cell groups. And the advantage is that, that uh, there is uh, cohesiveness, that the members are held together by, this, by these cell groups and then they, uh, uh, the, the leaders care for them, build up their spiritual strength and help them to serve God. And so this, uh, it's a way that the members, uh, they can grow and they, have a sense of belonging because they are cared for by the, by the leaders and also uh, the, 
the members become strong Christians and have, are motivated to serve God. So cell group churches very often can grow much uh, in quality first and then in quantity because when the cell group uh, leaders, they work hard to bring people into the cell group. They bring people, non-Christians and Christians. But there is a way, we, we'll talk about that later, a way whom to bring into the cell groups. And then in the cell groups, then, uh, then it's a way of growth for the church, okay? So uh, here, many cell group churches have much growth in quantity and quality of the members. Okay, cell groups and cell group churches. A, in each cell group, there is a group leader and a vice group leader. They are responsible for leading the cell group gathering and caring for the group members spiritually and also in the whole life. So in each cell group, there is a group leader and then a vice group leader, a help, a person, uh, uh, the second group leader who helps the group leader to take care of the people, to uh, counsel the people, to mentor the people, and they are responsible for leading the cell groups gathering. And then not just the, uh, the gathering, the cell groups activity is not just in the cell group, it's in the uh, daily life that they care for the group members spiritually and also in the whole life. So in healthy cell group churches, the cell group leaders would help you know, to relate to the members in their daily life, that there will be times during the week that he will call up these members, uh, maybe visit them and help them spiritually uh, so that these uh, members don't just relate to them in a cell group, but also relate to them in a daily life. Okay, and then in each cell group gathering, there are generally four parts. First is the welcome. Uh, there can be games or some group activities to build up the relationship with the group. So uh, it's also called ice break. Uh, it can be games, it can be uh, chatting, uh, relational time, it can be celebration of birthday, it can be a uh, time of eating some snacks, a time to relate to each other. And then two is the worship. One group member leads worship with or without instruments. So there's no pressure to always have musical instruments. There can be no musical instrument. They just get used to leading the worship. The main point is that they can worship God together with praise and worship. And then three, word. There is a review of the sermon of the previous Sunday worship and discussion and application. So review talk, and talk about, you know, talk about the main points of the sermon and then discuss it and apply it. And then for work, the members share their needs and pray for each other. And they are also encouraged to reach out to outsiders. So there are two parts that the members share about their needs and then they pray for each other. And then, uh, so this is work in a sense, they care for each other. And then uh, they are also encouraged to reach out to outsiders or there are plans to have activities outside of the group. For instance, outings or uh, eating somewhere and then invite outsiders to attend and then invite these outsiders to go to the cell group. Okay, so, uh, so these are the activities of the cell groups. And then C, the cell group leaders and vice leaders are responsible for holding the cell group gathering and follow up on the members. So they have to hold the meetings and then follow up on the members. They will train members to become core members who also take up these responsibilities. So other than the group leader and the vice group leader, they build up core group members. Now core members mean members who are committed. They are committed to build up the group. They will participate actively in the discussion. When the group leaders or someone lead the discussion, now, it doesn't have to be the group leader and the vice group leader to lead the discussion every time. Uh, they can also ask some people, some other people to lead and train them to lead. So this is a way of training. And then, 
so they they lead the okay so they are uh, the leaders or the vice leader or other people lead the meeting and then they can train other people to become core members core members are members who are very active uh, who are willing to build up the group and they will answer questions quickly when no one answers the questions for instance if they have the discussion questions they will answer quickly so to help other people uh, to feel uh, to feel more comfortable to sh to respond to the questions so they will um, uh, they will help build up the uh, the atmosphere of the group they will participate they will encourage each other they will appreciate the, the group leaders and the other people for participating so their participation will make the cell group more lively so these are the core group members and they are committed to the groups they are committed to come early and pray for the pray for the group and uh, so that they you know they and also they uh, also learn to care for other members they care for the newcomers and and other members too and then d compared to the traditional church model the advantage is that lay christians are raised up to serve god to reach out to non-christians and to build up christians a single pastor cannot follow up on so many members so the group leaders and the core uh, the vice group leaders and also the core members and other people can follow up on the other members and so they they are trained to follow up on people and build up their spiritual life because one pastor cannot take care of so many people so the cell group shared the responsibility of shepherding with uh, the um, many lay members the group leaders and the vice group leaders and the core members and even some other members they will participate in uh, shepherding the members okay e the group leaders and vice leaders will raise up group members to reach out to non-christians and build up christians so they will raise up these people to reach out to non-christians and build up christians as a result more christian participate in ministry God wants every Christian to serve God and give an account in the last judgment so Christians will participate in the ministry they will share ministry together compared to the church when the members just listen to the sermon many members don't have a chance to build up the spiritual life of other members but with the cell groups they can build up the spiritual life of other Christians of, and then of the non-Christians and they have a chance to serve God and when they get used to helping people spiritually then they can grow in ministry they can participate in different uh, in different kinds of ministry okay F these verses can best be fulfilled in cell groups so this these verses talk about what Christians can do can be fulfilled in cell groups Ephesians 4 15 but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love so Ephesians 4 15 here and 16 here talks about uh, the body of Christ growing and how does it grow so that all the Christians may grow when they speak the truth in love may grow up in all things into Jesus Christ from whom the whole body every Christian joined and knit together everyone is joined together by what every joint supplies so they would uh, join together with joints and uh, according to the effective working by which every part does its share so every little part participate every group member every uh, cell group member will participate uh, first is the cell group leader and the vice leader 
and then the core members, and then gradually more and more people participate. So they are given a chance to lead worship, given a chance to lead uh, the discussion because it's all written down for them, and then they, uh, so, so the leader can help them, prepare for them how to lead the discussion. And then gradually they are trained also to help other members, to care for them, to pray for them. So each part does its share, and then it will cause growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So it's a, it gives a chance for Christians to care for each other, to love each other, and to build up each other. So this is very important. This is very helpful, uh, a, a way to build up every Christian in ministry. This kind of churches generally um, is more healthy. They're more healthy and they build up more Christians and also, uh, there is always an uh, emphasis of mission work of the cell group churches. So this, they get used to helping other members and then they are, they are trained to go into mission field. Now for you, you could be going to another place where they have needs and then you go and help them spiritually or demonstrate how to do the cell groups uh, and, uh, or share the messages or build up pe people's spiritual life when they get used to building up the spiritual life of other group members, then it's easier for them to learn to serve God and also share how they uh, serve God by helping people spiritually and by bringing people uh, to Jesus. So uh, cell group is a very effective way and in the cell group network in Hong Kong, there are hundreds of people participate in uh, mission work every year. Uh, so every year they, s they have people who participate from the elderly to the young people. Um, many young people participate in the mission work and then they go to different places to help the, uh, the churches there and to, to reach out to the people and strengthen the people. Okay, G, the pastor has to have cell group gatherings with the cell group leaders and vice leaders. Now first, the first turn is that the pastor will have a cell group. This is the first turn. The pastor has to do the cell group himself. And then he trained the first group of group leaders. Now, not everyone in the group will become a group leader. He has to discern who are capable of becoming a group leader. Now, some people cannot communicate with people well. They have to be trained more. They have to need more time to grow. They cannot be group leaders yet. And then when they get used to it and gradually they, became, they can become group leaders. And then after the pastor trained the first group of group leaders, and then this group leaders will find members or actually it's best that the pastor with the group leaders will plan to divide the people in the church in the small groups and then ask them if they're willing to join small groups. Now before people join small groups, they, uh, we have to explain to them that they are expected to participate every week and they will get the benefit of the spiritual care of this group of people and they will be built up spiritually and also in their daily life, and in application of the truth. So that will attract people to participate. And then, but they are expected to participate uh, regularly. Now, of course, sometimes if they have, uh, they cannot come for certain reasons, it's fine. But they should commit to come uh, almost every week. And so people who are willing to participate, then they can join the cell group. But if people are not willing, then uh, we leave them alone for now and then maybe invite them later. Because if they don't come regularly, it would disrupt the group. They should commit to come at least half or more than half of the meetings uh, so that they can be more constant in the group. Now, when we invite non-Christians too, we can ask them, you can be helped here and then uh, we can pray for you and you can experience God here. Are you willing to come regularly every week? And the cell groups are very effective to bring people to believe in Jesus because they can see Christians alive in the cell group. 
Okay, and then so after the cell groups are built up, after the pasture has the first cell group, and then after generally is after one year or nine months that the cell group will split, then these people that the pastors train, those who are capable, will become group leaders. And they have to have a lot of practice in the first year. They have to, the pastor has to let go and let them practice. And then reveal with them how they have been doing in leading the group. So to let them uh, lead the cell group, lead the worship, and talk with people, uh, to mentor people, counsel people. So the pastor has to train these people to make sure that they can become cell group leaders. And then after the first year when they can start the cell groups, then the pastor will have a cell group of the group leaders. That he will take care of these group leaders. That uh, there are two parts to take care of. First, to take care of their spiritual life. Second, is to take care of their ministry in the cell groups, how they are doing in the cell groups. So, to build up their spiritual life as well as uh, building up uh, their way of ministry and also give them some training and listening to their problems and responding to them. And generally, cell group leaders. Uh, do come across a lot of pressure. Now, why is there a lot of pressure? Because they are serving like little pastors. Now, generally, when members come to church, when Christians come to church, they are not pastors. They don't have the responsibility of take care of other Christians. So, there's not much pressure. But as a cell group leader, when the cell group members don't come regularly, or when the cell group members don't grow, they become very weak, or they have spiritual problem, then the or they reject the members, or the group leaders, or they don't participate in the discussion. Uh, all this can give pressure to the leader. The leader need to learn to let go of the pressure and serve joyfully. With joy, he can influence the. Uh, the members, uh, then he served joyfully. But sometimes it's a tendency, you know, we know that even pastors have pressure. So not everyone learned to be, put down the pressure and let God take care of uh, the result. And also, it's true that many leaders don't, haven't learned how to take care of people, so they don't know how to, uh, how to build up the, uh, the spiritual life of the members, how to build up the atmosphere of the, of the cell group. The atmosphere is very important. When people participate in a discussion, they care for each other, they love each other, and they share what God has done in their life, then the atmosphere of the cell group will be very lively and uh, Christ-like. But there are cell groups that are very dead. People don't participate. People don't talk. And the spiritual life of the Christians are very weak and these are very weak cell groups. So then the leaders need to build up the core members first, the members who are more steady in the spiritual life, to build them up so that they can build up the, the spiritual atmosphere, I should say, the spiritual atmosphere. But it's also the atmosphere of discussion too, not just the spiritual atmosphere, but the spirit of uh, uh, the atmosphere of the discussion and the practice and the interaction. So all this need to be trained. So first, the pastor really need to learn how to be a, a cell group leader. He need to learn counseling. Need to learn how to listen to people, responding to people without giving pressure. And serving joyfully. Uh, even when group members don't come, they don't take the pressure. They will say, we just do our best. Even when two members come in a group, they still are joyful. That they, well, they're happy that two come, and then the two persons who come, they get helped, and then they are happy, and then they will bring more people. So when group members feel helped and cared for in the cell groups, then they have the motivation to bring in more people, and they have the motivation to participate. So it comes from the spiritual life of the pastor and the leaders. 
Uh, very importantly, it has to come from the spiritual life of the pastor. And not just his spiritual life, but his personal life. That he is a joyful person, is a burden-free person, as a caring person. So all the qualities of a person who serves God. Now one time I have talked about the qualities of people who serve God. So the pastor has to build up those qualities that he has love for God, he has love for people, he has a strong spiritual life, he has joy from the Lord, he has strength from the Lord, and he has compassion for the people, he cares for the people, he is willing to spend time on people, and he is positive, he is not critical of the people, he appreciates every growth the people have. So when the pastor has these qualities, and also how to, that his sharing relate to the people, it's not just talking about theory, it's talking about something real in their life. So when the pastor talks about, you know, that if the message is about love, he can share from experience how he has been loved by other people and how the love has helped him and how he has loved other people and see these people grow and how he also has seen people who don't love and how these people they cannot have, uh, they, uh, they cannot build up other people and they actually hurt other people spiritually. Uh, and also, how these people, uh, you know, it's very hard to, uh, uh, to relate to because they don't love people, they don't care about people. So, there are problems of people who don't love. And then there are strengths of people who love. So, from this real experiences of the pastor that he has met different people and his experience with these people is always encouraging these people building up these people changing people from lazy people to become caring people changing people from lukewarm christians to zealous christians to christians who care about other people so a cell group church really will test the life quality, the spiritual life and the life quality of the pastors and the leaders. And if they have these life qualities, then they can help other people. So it's a personal style of ministry. It's more personal. It's not just standing up on a pulpit and preaching. Uh, it's relating to people, understanding people, caring for people. So I hope uh, we all hunger this kind of ministry and then it will build up people who care for people. It will build up people who can serve God. It will, the self-group churches can raise up more people to serve God. So this is something very wonderful. It will help up, it will build up uh, uh, people who are willing to serve God, build up ministers. So the pastors has to have cell group gathering with the cell group leaders and the vice leaders to build them up spiritually and respond to the problems and needs in the ministry. So two parts, help them spiritually and respond to their own problems and needs in the ministry. Because the leaders are like small pastors and they will face difficulties in ministering to members, they need to be supported. Now this is a uh, you know, it's an important topic on the cell group. So I hope you will think and then you would uh, ask questions. Uh, so, they, so you can ask questions of how to run the cell group. H. The leaders will spend time mentoring their members individually. So the leaders will uh, spend time one to one talk with the members. Now, sometimes it pass. Now, sometimes if uh, time is limited, it's possible to have two or three. Uh, but it's best mentoring one to one. Uh, mentoring the members individually. This includes listening to the condition, their needs, and the problem, and responding to them. So, listening to them and responding to them, caring for them is not just teaching them; it's counseling them, responding to where they are and training them in some area and praying for them. So train them and pray for them. So the mentoring also includes training and praying for them. The pastor will mentor 
the leaders. So there's mentoring in a cell group system. And then I, cell group churches are churches in which cell group ministry is the most important element uh, elements of the church. And also there is worship. And then there is, uh, so there, there are the two wings of the church. One wing is the worship service and the other wing is uh, the cell groups. And much attention is paid to building up the cell groups and the cell group leaders. So much attention. And even in the messages, there's a lot of uh, building up of the cell group and the cell group leaders. And to encourage every member to become cell group members. And there is encouragement in the sermons to support the cell group ministry. The two wings of the cell group churches are the worship service and the cell groups. All members of the cell of the church are invited to join a cell group. The members are encouraged to attend the cell group relatively regularly. So they are invited to join and they are expected to join uh, relatively regularly, at least two times a month or three times a month. Participate in the discussion of the cell group. So they are expected to participate. Now in the beginning they might not, but then uh, gradually uh, you know, we make the questions easier so they can all answer and encourage the newcomers to answer. Uh, and then respond to and care about the cell group members. So uh, each member can share at the beginning of the icebreak time, they can share about their life uh, since the last cell group meeting. How is their personal life, their spiritual life, how is their family? So they will share about their problems in the daily life, in the family and in the work, uh, in the uh, spiritual life. And then the, uh, the leaders and the cell group members will respond to them with care and understanding of the problem. It's not just teaching. It's first is to understand and accept them and to guide the person to find uh, ways to solve the problem. So this is very important when I talk about counseling. It's listening to them and empathizing with them and say, I know it's difficult. And also naming their feelings. For instance, if they have guilt, we can say, oh, are you feeling guilty uh, because you've done that or because you have not done something for your family members? Do you feel guilty? And or uh, do you feel pressure? Do you feel unhappy? So we can ask questions to help the person to identify the feelings they have. And then after we uh, they can identify the feelings and then we can empathize with them and say, I know it's very difficult for you. I know it, it makes you feel unhappy. I know it gives you a lot of pressure. And then we can ask them, do you want to, uh, to solve this problem and what are some ways that you can improve on, uh, in managing the problem and guide the person to think and then, uh, and then uh, we can help them uh, find ways and then how can they apply uh, the ways to their life. So mainly to guide them to think, not just tell them the, how to do it, but guide them to think how to uh, solve the problems, how to improve on the situation uh, and then care about them and, and sometimes if the counseling is too long then we can do it afterwards or, or have another time. Be supportive of the cell group so the members are encouraged, they, you know, they support the cell group and help each other. At the same time non-Christians who are willing to come are also invited to join the cell groups so they they are invited to join the cell group and the goal is to lead them to believe in Jesus. K. A cell group church pastor has to have the mentality of the cell group. He has to have this mentality of caring for people, listening to people, respecting people. He has to care about the cell group leaders and listen to their needs and respond to them. So he has to first care about the cell group leaders. And the messages have to build up the members to care for each other. So the messages will build up the members, the, 
their ability to care for each other, to love each other, to help each other. A necessary quality of a cell group church is that it has love and caring of the members. So it's very important to have love and care, caring of the members. So the messages is not just theoretical messages, but messages that are applicable, that are useful, that would help people. Okay, and then cell group church pastors have heavier workload because it's not just preparing for the message. He has to build up the cell group leaders. He has to counsel and mentor the cell group leaders. And he has to visit, also he should visit the cell groups to understand how the cell groups are and to know the people. Because they have to train, build up, support and mentor the leaders. They have to care about personal needs of the leaders. They have to make sure that the cell leaders are doing the job and don't burn out. So to make sure that they are doing the job, uh, how are they doing in leading the cell group? So he has to visit the cell group to find out how they're doing and then uh, to find out, to mentor them, to find out what do they have pressure and then do they have a feeling of being burned out and help them overcome that feeling. They have to coordinate with them how to run the cell groups. So have to coordinate with them and relate to them how to run the cell groups. And then when the cell group grows to about 12 people, it has to split into two groups. So generally there's a time of uh, nine months or one year, uh, then the church, the cell group has to split. Unless if the church grows, the groups grow so fast, then it can split in maybe half a year. Because if a group is too large, it is hard to have much discussion. If there are, you know, 15 or more people in a group, then it's hard to discuss and hard to uh, everyone to have a chance to talk. So this is the way how the cell groups grow too. Before splitting, the members, the leaders have to train leaders of the new group. So he has to train up new leaders and vice group leaders and he has to train the core members. The leaders have to let the members practice leading wor welcome, worship, word and work and evaluate how they have done and how they can improve. So they have to practice leading welcome and worship, uh, wel the welcome part, the relation part and the worship part and the word part and then uh, the sharing of the word and application and then work how to care for each other and how to plan uh, for the group to reach out. So the future leaders have to practice doing all these parts. And the other members also practice so that everyone has a chance to practice if they are uh, capable, if they are uh, willing to do it. Now sometimes some people, they, they can do it to a certain extent but they are very shy and afraid. We still encourage them to do it, even though they don't do it very well. But there are people who absolutely cannot do it because they are still, you know, spiritually very problematic, has a lot of problem, and also spiritually very too weak, uh, or they cannot uh, talk at all to discuss, to lead the discussion. So they need to. Sometimes it can be two persons leading. So the leader and another member he wants to train. So he, ahead of time, he discussed with this leader, uh, member how to do it. And then in the process, the leader and him trying to do it together. And then when he has problem, then the leader will help him, uh, remind him. And uh, so this is one way to have co-leading situation to, for them to practice. Okay, and then a cell group should split into two groups in about one year's time. There are four stages within the year. Within this year, there are four stages. First, knowing and exploring stage. After splitting the group and inviting members to join, the members get to know each other. So about 10 to 12 weeks. So that's about uh, less than four months that they know each other, to explore uh, the relationship. And then two, resolving conflicts stage. 
a stage in which conflicts between members and problems of members are resolved also about 10 to 12 weeks so because uh, in uh, because cell group is is like a marriage in a, in a sense because they are connected to each other relating to each other when they relate to each other they would have conflicts for instance some members might be irresponsible they might uh, throw a tantrum have temper or they are very sad depressed and so it causes conflict in the group so in this process the leader would try to talk with them uh, uh, personally and and try to resolve the problem and help them to relate to each other so, so basically to overcome the problem so that they can relate to each other well okay and then three training and outreach stage a stage of training the members to reach out and actual reach out to invite people to join the cell group 20 to 24 weeks so that's about uh, almost six months so training them to reach out and then outreach a stage of training the members to reach out and then actually doing the outreach to invite people to join the cell group and then growing and splitting stage when a group has grown to have 10 to 12 people new leaders are trained and the cell group is preparing for splitting in the two so uh, th the fourth stage is that uh, they, they are growing and then they're uh, training the new leaders to prepare for the splitting so these four stages are first to know each other and explore the relationship and then resolve the conflicts now sometimes it doesn't take that long you know sometimes even in the beginning there is solving conflicts it depends on the group and uh, actually in cell groups uh, you sh we can see the problems of people much more than in just a regular church service because then people can you know they show their emotions they uh, they have they talk about their problems or they cannot relate to other people or they hurt each other verbally they because they might be doing that all the time they might say negative things about people all the time and in a cell group then we discover that this person like to talk negatively and so we uh, we help these people to realize that they have this habit of hurting people so the way to do it is to ask them now today you said this to the member to someone you said uh, uh, why didn't you do it and uh, what do you think the other person would feel how he would feel and then do you like the person to feel that way and uh, what is another way of talking to change this so to guide them to think now sometimes uh, counseling to help members to face a problem may not be done in a cell group if now if it's uh, counseling to help comfort a person we can do in a cell group but if a member has certain problem then we want to counsel them individually afterwards or and at another time that we uh, have an appointment with the person to have another time to counsel the person instead of counseling them in public if this person has a problem of relating to people uh, and at the point when this person hurt other people we want to care about the other person too so we can immediately say uh, when you said this what do you think the other person would feel and uh, uh, and then can you apologize for that and and then we can say okay we can talk about this another time some other time to talk about how we can talk to each other or we can the leader can explain about uh, I have ta I talk about this one time words of grace and words gentle words of the law words of grace is saying uh, words that comfort people encourage people uh, to say how to say words like oh you're doing great I appreciate you you are you are uh, I like how you help us how how you care for each other so these are encouraging words that uh, that they are words of grace 
And then words of the law would be to, uh, uh, sometimes we had to talk about, you know, how we uh, relate to each other and how can we talk in a way we don't hurt each other. We don't want to hurt people when we guide them to change. We want to find a way to say it gently. For instance, uh, now, just now when you said that, how does the other person feel? And what is a better way that we can say this without hurting the person? And what do we have to pay attention to? And what is the, uh, when we say something critical, how does it affect the other person? So uh, we have to guide them to understand uh, the, destruct the destructiveness of negative words and critical words. So this is a very important skill, the skill of counseling. And not to make the person feel hurt. Now, if a leader doesn't know how to handle that and it hurts both persons, then both persons will leave the group. And then other people seeing the two persons leave the group, they also leave, will leave the group. So cell group leaders have to learn all this. And so if anything happens in a cell group, the cell group leaders has to report to the pastor. And then the pastor will try to counsel them and help them overcome the problem. And there should be written a, gen, a, a, you know, a, a general reporting of the, of the cell group too. You know, how it has happened, did anything, what happened, and how do the people relate. So there can be simple reporting of the cell group to uh, give to the pastor that it can be written in a form that the form writes down, in the form that they write down uh, what happened in a cell group. Cell groups that cannot grow should be regrouped into new groups to try out a new leader. So if it doesn't grow, then it has to be regrouped to try a new leader. And then uh, the, the leader who cannot bring any growth that has uh, the the pastor or another leader has to help uh, help him, listen to him. So in the process of during the year already, the pastor would try to help this leader who has problem leading the group, how to lead effectively. And uh, so, so they regroup into new groups to try out a new leader and new members to see whether it can grow. So to try to split up the group and try a different way. In the whole process, now of course the regrouping has to, has to come from discussion, that they discuss how to regroup, uh, how to regroup the groups. Uh, what is one possible way that can make it uh, workable? In the whole process, there is much mentoring, training, evaluation, and discussion about what should be done to the cell groups. Okay, so there should be much discussion uh, and mentoring on how to uh, uh, how we can do the cell groups better. If a church wants to try the cell group mo model, there should be training of the pastor and the church members. Trained leaders should try to lead cell groups of members for, for one year. There is evaluation to see whether the church is suitable to follow the cell group model. So if a church wants to try the cell group model, there should be training of the pastor. The pastor has to be trained. And then the members has to be trained. And the trained leaders should try to lead uh, cell groups of members for one year. And there is evaluation to, where, to see whether the church is suitable to follow the cell group model. Uh, and what are the problems and how can it be corrected. Not all churches are suitable to start to have cell groups. If the members just want to listen to sermons and have not learned to communicate with other people and care for each other, it is hard for them to follow the cell group model. They have to be trained and convinced of the effectiveness of cell groups. So if the members are not caring, they're not mature, they don't want to care for people, they don't know how to communicate with people, they have problematic personal relationship, then they're not suitable 
to be cell group leaders or cell group members. So they, the church has to be evaluated and the pastor has to have messages to build up the spiritual life of the Christians, to build up their ability to relate to people, the ability to listen to people and to counsel people. All these are very important part of cell group. So uh, there should be evaluation. Now, if not all the members can be, have a cell group, sometimes a few members if a church, a pastor finds there are a few members who have, have the potential, then he can start a cell group with a few members. And then some other members who are willing to participate. If there are a few members who are willing to participate and uh, relate to each other and care for each other, if there are a few members or even two, you know, a cell group can be started with a leader and two members. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It can be a small group. And then, then the pastor will, in, a, in the process, he will train himself how to care for people.